Hello and welcome to another Portworks demo. This is a simple use case where we talk about how you can install Portworks on an Amazon EKS cluster. To install Portworks, navigate to central.portworks.com and log in or create a new account. You can select a 30 day free trial for Portworks Enterprise to get started. Select Portworks Enterprise as the default installation method and select a version of Portworks that you want running on your EKS cluster. You have the option of uh, allowing Portworks to deploy a built-in etcd instance for as the key value data store or you can use an external one as well. Hit next and you can select the specific cloud environment. So let's select cloud and select AWS as our uh, as we are running an EKS cluster. You can select additional things like the type of EBS volume you need for your uh, data disks. So here you can select GP2, specify a size and uh, the IOPS requirement per volume or you can keep it simple and just select GP2 and specify a size. Let's go with GP2 and 150 gigs for this demo. You can leave the network settings as default or customize them as needed for your EKS instance. Next in the customize section, select EKS as the distribution and set an environment variable called enable ASG storage partitioning as true. You can uh, specify additional customizations like a private registry setting, whether you want to enable authorization, whether you want to enable telemetry, you can select all of those. And once you are happy with your selections, click finish. Here Portworks will present an end user license agreement that you can read through at your own pace. Uh, once you have read through it, you can hit agree to accept the terms. And at that point, Portworks will give you a couple of commands to install Portworks on your EKS cluster. Uh, the first one deploys the Portworks operator on your EKS cluster. And the second one creates a custom resource called a Portworks storage cluster on your Amazon EKS cluster. You can save these configs in a YAML file, or you can also directly copy the commands and apply it against your EKS cluster. The Portworks operator basically deploys a deployment object uh, that runs the Portworks operator. So you can verify that the operator has been deployed successfully by doing a kubectl get deploy. Once the operator is up and running, you can copy the second command and install a, a, a Portworks storage cluster. Portworks storage cluster basically deploys a bunch of uh, custom roles, uh, role bindings, uh, pods, deployment objects, service accounts, uh, service objects, all of those things and automates the entire deployment for you. Uh, as part of the deployment, it will deploy one Portworks pod per EKS worker node in your EKS cluster. And uh, each Portworks pod will then instantiate or, or deploy and attach EBS volumes to your EKS worker node. These individual EBS volumes match the configuration that you selected in Portworks Central. Uh, once the EBS volumes are attached, Portworks then proceeds to aggregate them into a single storage pool that's then available for your stateful applications to use to dynamically provision block or file based persistent volumes. You can look at how the deployment is progressing by doing a kubectl logs f on one of the Portworks pods in the kube system namespace. And you can monitor the Portworks deployment and even go through all the different steps that, that are done as part of the deployment. Uh, let's exit out of the logs and then we can do a simple kubectl get pods in the kube system namespace to see whether all the containers and all the pods uh, as part of our deployment are up and running or not. So let's do a kubectl get pods in the kube system namespace. Here you can see I'm still waiting for my second container in my portworks pod to come online. This whole process takes just a few minutes for Portworks to be completely up and running on your EKS cluster. And as you can see, there isn't a ma any manual steps needed. All you need to do is execute a couple of commands against your cluster and Portworks will handle the rest. Let's exec into the Portworks pod once it's up and running and use our pixiecuttle CLI utility and do a pixiecuttle status command. Here you can see that it has a trial license associated with it. It shows you all the different worker nodes that you have that are contributing storage to your EKS cluster and it shows you the total available capacity for your storage pool. Uh, once you have uh, verified that your Portworks storage cluster is up and running, you can go ahead and start deploying your applications.
As part of this demo, what we'll do is we'll deploy a simple Postgres instance uh, using one of the default storage classes that Portworks uh, deploys for you. So we'll use the px-db storage class for our Postgres deployment. Uh, you can do a simple kubectl apply dash f and deploy your uh, Postgres volumes first and then followed by the actual deployment object. So let's do the kubectl apply command for volumes and you can see that we provision or dynamically provision a couple of persistent volumes for Postgres. One is pgbench-data and the second one is pgbench-state. They have different capacities. Both of them are block volumes or read write once volume provision using our px hyphen db storage class. So at this, uh, this point, like these persistent volumes basically inherit all the capabilities that are defined in the px db storage class parameters. Let's wait for our Postgres pod to come online. And once that's online, what we can do is we can verify that uh, the Postgres pod has two containers. One is the Postgres container. The second one is a PG bench container. And we'll verify that the PG bench container is able to actively write IO to the disk and generate data. So to do that, we can do a kubectl logs dash F for the PG bench container. And you can see that all of the our PG bench container is generating some IO against our Postgres instance. Uh, we can also exec into the Postgres pod and uh, verify that databases are being created. So let's do a kubectl exec and then copy the name of the Postgres pod. And uh, it's, it's running in the default namespace, so we don't need to specify a different namespace. Let's open an interactive bash shell and then we'll use the psql utility and log in as the pgbench user. If you just do a simple slash L, you will see 29 rows already exist. And as pgbench writes more and more data or generates more and more IO, those number of databases will keep on increasing. Now let's look at the persistent volumes and then see how those persistent volumes are actually provisioned on the backend portwork storage uh, pool. Uh, to, to look at that, uh, we need to exec into the post, uh, portworks pod again and use our pixie cutters uh, utility to uh, do a volume list and then a volume inspect. Volume list basically lists all the different volumes that are provisioned using Portworks. And then for volume inspect, you can just uh, copy the ID for that volume and use the pixie cuddle volume inspect command. So as you can see here, you can get many more details like the high availability status, which means it has three replicas. Uh, it shows you the IO priority configured the state. Uh, it shows you where those three replicas exist. So it shows you the three EKS worker node across which these uh, the persistent volume is copied over. So even if you lose a specific node or an availability zone, you will have no data loss and still be highly available and bring your applications online quickly. This is how easy it is to deploy Portworx on an Amazon EKS cluster and hopefully it can help you get started. That's it for this demo. Thanks for watching.